what we've got here is this jig that I made on my uh, disc sander. This piece right here is a section of a sphere. It's uh, the same size as a bowling ball, same radius. And the center point of it is on the same plane as uh, the plane that's created by this, the disc of the sander. Okay, so here's your geometry of how this thing works. The circle represents the sphere and the radius point is about right here. Um, this vertical line through it is uh, the plane that the, uh, the sanding disc and also the bandsaw blade lie on. And uh, the jig that supports the workpiece, you know, it's like a little piece of it like this, spherical surface. And uh, this is the sanding disc for the bandsaw blade. And there's be, there will be this uh, little piece on the bottom that's got the, the hole through it that holds it steady, keeps it from wobbling around. And uh, the workpiece is glued up on top of it like this. And so whenever this is skewed up along this sphere into the either the blade or the sanding disc, it's going to make a a joint that's a radial line. And when any way you turn it and you get the same result, the, uh, the joint will be a radial line. And you just gotta make sure you put pressure over directly over this piece that's on the bottom so it doesn't tip over. And using this, it automatically makes the, the correct bevel angle on all the edges. And in a, a spherical sense, it's like, uh, it's essentially the same as a square edge. Whenever you round this whole thing over, you know, you'll have a, a square corner. And that's how it works. I've glued a piece of plywood with a hole drilled through it and the edge of the hole being round when it sits onto this uh, spherical piece it makes full contact and that keeps it from wobbling around and that, that makes it steady enough to you know to ground these angles on here. Now since the, uh, the radius point is on the same plane as this sanding disc you know whenever I sand this it's going to make you know, a, a joint surface that's going to be a plane that's perpendicular to the surface of the sphere and it will match up perfectly with another one you know next to it to uh, so I can build up a, a shape that's a bowl or a sphere or what have you or even a, a spherical ribbon that I'll show you later. Here's the piece that I just got through showing you over by the sander and put these pieces together already they're already glued up but uh, they've got the plywood with a hole drilled through them hot glued to the bottom side also so when I put these on here all these let me get rid of these bigger holes all these circles on the bottom are making full contact with a sphere at the same time and then when I add this next piece you know, I'll set it on that circle and it just matches up like that. And so I'll glue that together and let it set up for a little bit before I add more to it. And I just continue on around, you know, adding more pieces to it. But uh, the bowls are one thing that you can make. Um, you can also make what I call spherical ribbons. And that's what this is. I never did complete this, but I think it's pretty cool. I 
on each of these pieces rather than gluing on a, a piece of plywood with a hole drilled through it I just drilled a shallow hole with a Forstner bit into the bottom edge of each one of these pieces and then when I sanded it instead of having it sit, sitting on a broad face you know like that you know, I had them standing up on edge you know like that and it fits very well it's making full contact and I've got another one that I made uh, before I show it to you. I've still got the pattern that I used to make it. Uh, looking at this bowling ball, you can see the grid that I drew on it. And I've also got this line here. It's a spiral that goes from you know one pole to the other. And uh, I followed along those lines to uh, you know when I was placing the segments on there. <clears throat> this is my spherical spiral and the bowling ball you know fit in this inside space to get the ball back out after I was finished I had to take two of the joints back apart I did that just by gluing a piece of paper in the joint and then it would come back off it's got a little bit of springiness to it. But that's one of the things that this method is capable of. I've got an ebook on my website with instructions on how to do this. You know, if you're if you're interested in this, you can check that out. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, please share and like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. I sure appreciate it. Thank you.